Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today let's talk about evaluating this integral. And the region is the one that we need to focus on setting up the integral because that's the usually the difficult part when it comes to uh, setting up the double integral. So you can see that it says that the region is in the lower half plane. So if you look at the xy plane here, this is the lower half plane. So that means we are going to have the region in the third and the fourth quadrant, right, possibly, and then bounded by the circles x squared plus y squared equals one. So that is a unit circle center at the origin. And then the other circle is the circle with radius two. So if we are graphing them, we are graphing them, then we are going to, well, if we are graphing this first one, then we only graph the portion of the circle that is below the x-axis. So um, you can see that this is negative one and then one, right? So we are going to start graphing the circle. And then also all the way to here. Okay, so that's this first one. And then now the second one has radius two. So we are going to start by graphing it here. So we are going to get to this point and then just continue from there. So this is two. So we are going to get, so this is the portion here. And now in the lower half plane, so we don't, we don't really draw anything above the X axis here. So the region that we are getting, okay, as you can see, it's actually this region here. So we are actually integrating this function over this region R. So this is R. So everything inside here. Now, the question is, how do we set up this integral? You can see that this is actually, um, it's actually circular. So you can actually see that uh, if we are to set up the integral instead of using rectangular, because if we are setting it in rectangular, we need three double integrals for this region. But if we set it up in polar, then it will be a lot easier. So we are going to start writing this integral in polar. So we are going to, well, first let's write down the integral. So we have three X plus four Y square and then DA. Okay, so now let's think about this. Um, first, regarding the polar, we can actually, just, let's just recall so that X is equal to, we can actually write it as R cosine data. Okay, and then for y, what about y, y is r sine data? Okay, so now we are going to make those substitutions in here. So we are going to start writing it. So we are going to, now we are going to leave the limits blank for now because we are uh, going to just do the easy part first. The integrand is actually the easy part. So we are going to write down the integrand. The integrand is going to be what, three? Okay, and then x, x is r cosine data, so we are going to get r cosine data right here. And then now the other one is the plus four, and then there was a y square, so we are going to put the r sine data for the y, right? So we are going to get r sine data square. And then uh, close the parentheses around this, and then now the da will be R and then DR D data, as you can see here. Okay, so now the difficult part is actually the part with the limits. And then how do we figure out the limits? As you can see that uh, for the inner integral, we have the limits for the R. Okay, so how do we get the R? We can actually draw some arrows starting from the origin. Okay, so you may say, how do we do that? Well, first, let's just do that. Starting from the origin, let's say if I pick a specific uh, data, right? And so starting from the origin, and then what really happens is that when I hit this inner circle here, then I'm going to include everything from this inner circle to this outer circle here. So see that I'm making a solid line right here to indicate that I, I want this portion only. So the, the dash portion is the part that I do not want to include because they're not part of the region. So only from the inner circle to the outer circle. Okay, and then we just keep going. So um, let's say if we draw another arrow, that means picking another angle here. So, and then we hit this point and then now we want this portion. And then you can see that once you go beyond this portion, we don't want to include that anymore. So we can try another angle and then you can see that we would get just this portion here. So um, we are going to choose the angle from starting from here and then we go all the way back to here. And then you can see that no matter which angle that we choose, then we actually want to start from uh, how 
how far are those all those points away from the origin is one unit because the that is part of the inner circle that is part of the unit circle right and so as you can see that that's one right and that's two so r the limits for r would be from one to two as you can see here yeah see that you don't really need to deal with any of the square roots uh, when you set up this integral in polar, but if you set it up in rectangular, then you need to deal with a lot of square roots. Yeah, that will make the calculation a lot more difficult. Okay, so that's the um, that's for the R. And then you may say, what about the data? The data you can actually just look at the the region. Okay, so we're getting the data. The data is starting from here. Okay, we start from the lower angle. So what is this? Data is starting from. Uh, pi as you can see and then we start going this way so just keep going just keep going just keep going and then we get to here okay which is what data equals what 2 pi so our angle is from pi to 2 pi as you can see so now we have the um, the double integral set up as iterated in integral for um, in polar Okay, so now the rest is really just doing the computation. So um, what happens is that first we get to simplify this integrand. And so we are going to get pi and then two pi, and then one to two. We cannot really do the integration yet. So let's just simplify this and distribute it on here. So we get three r squared cosine data and then plus. Now there is a r squared, right? And then there is also r, so we get four r cubed and then sine square data. And then we have dr d data here. Okay. And then now what really happens is that we are going to just integrate with respect to r. So we don't need to worry about the cosine data and then the sine data. So we can just, just go from there. So we get pi to pi and then now start doing the integration. So we are going to get what? Here, this one will give us r to the third power. So we get r to the third power. And then you evaluate it from one to two, as you can see that those are the limits. And then the cosine data, you can just put it on the side, right? And then now just continue. What about this one? This one, antiderivative for four r cubed would give us r to the fourth as you can see, so from one to two, and then the sine square, just leave it for now. And then, so we still have the data, the D data here. Okay, so continue with the calculation. So pi to two pi, and then here, just plug in the two in there, you get eight, plugging the one in there, you get one. So eight minus one, we are going to get seven. So we're going to get seven cosine, data here and then plus now playing the two we get 16 playing the one we get one so 16 minus one we get 15 so we get 15 sine square data and then the data here <clears throat> okay now we can actually break this into two integrals which will just make things easier so we get seven and then pi and then two pi and then cosine data here the data and then plus the other one is the 15, right? So the 15 here. Uh, now, before we uh, write it down, you can see that there is a sine square here and then we cannot integrate this one directly. We actually need to use the half angle formulas to rewrite this, okay? So let's just recall the half angle formula. So let me just recall it right here. Regarding the half angle formula, if we have a sine square, then we are going to get sine square of theta is equal to one over two, and then one minus cosine of two theta. As you can see right here, this is having a power of one, so we can we can integrate this directly. So we can rewrite this sine square as one half and then one minus cosine of two theta. Okay, so we are going to now just convert it at the same time. So we get 15. I'm pulling it outside the integral, so 15. And then there was the one half, right? We can divide by two. So I'm going to divide by two. And then the integral still from pi to two pi. See that I'm not integrating. I'm just rewriting the sine square. So we are going to have um, the inner portion, which is one minus cosine of two theta and then the data here. So now we can integrate each integral directly. So now let's just continue from with the integration. So here we are going to integrate this um, 
this one is the what sign right we are going to get the sign so we get seven and then sign data evaluate it from pi to two pi okay so this one is easy and then the next one is 15 over two and what happens is that the one will give us the what the data okay because we're integrating respect to data this one will give us also sine function but then there is a two here, so we gotta have the one half in front of the sine function, so one half sine of two data. Also evaluate it from this, uh, pi to two pi. Okay, so right now, what happens is that you can see, um, if you plug in the two pi in here, sine of two pi is zero, plug in the pi here, sine of pi is also zero, so we don't need to worry about this thing. So we can just, that will give us zero, right? So don't need to worry about this. And then also the same thing happens right here. When we plug in the two pi, we get sine of four pi, which is also zero. Plug in the pi here, sine of two pi is also zero, so we don't need to worry about this thing. So the only thing that we need to worry about is really just the data. So we are going to just get 15 over two. And then data, we plug in the two pi, so we get the two pi, and then minus plug in the pi, so we get the pi here. And then after you do the calculation, that's really easy. So 15 over two and then times pi. So that is our final answer. Okay, so that's it for this problem. So as you can see that this is a typical problem for setting the double integral in polar coordinates because that you can see that that region is actually, uh, it's actually circular so that you can actually use the polar coordinates to set it up. If you are to set it up in rectangular, then you need to break the region into three so that you can set up. And um, in that case, you have to deal with a lot of square roots when you are doing the integration. So that would be too much work, right? Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please share and subscribe to my channel. I will see you next time.